Hi, I'm Vernon Kay, and Radio 2's Piano Room Month is back. From the iconic Maidervale Studios with some amazing acts and, of course, BBC's very own concert orchestra. Opening the Piano Room for 2024, we welcome none other than Bruce Hornsby, performing his breakthrough 80s hit The Way It Is, plus brand new material and a special cover of a Don Henley classic. Time is the line on the color bar. 
oh no That's just the way it is mm, Some things will never change That's just the way it is But don't you believe them As I look around the piano room here at Murder Vale, uh, there were lots of knowing smiles and little nods uh, because I think that tune means so many different things to so many people. And as you rightly mentioned before, it was the music that we all heard on Grandstand right, right. was the sports show. And it was nice. A few people had, uh, were welling up. I won't name names, but it's an emotional tune. Does it bring back happy memories from the, the writing process when you sat down on the keyboard and come up with that? Well, I wrote it in my garage, in my house in Van Nuys, California, uh, based on growing up in a small southern town where narrow-minded attitudes did prevail. And uh, so remembering that, ruminating on that, led me to write this song. And uh, so I guess my memories, that, the memories that inspired it, were not particularly fond memories, you know. Uh, I was the only white guy in the high school basketball team. So I had serious soul brother friends and still do in my town where I live again. And so uh, it was a charged environment quite often. And so, uh, so, but look, it led to this song, which led to Tupac Shakur recording it and having sort of, in a sense, certainly in certain worlds, a way bigger record than the way it is was for me. And that was with Changes. Changes. And yeah. then uh, a couple of years ago, a, a great Chicago young rapper named Polo G did a beautiful version called Waiting for a Hero with a gospel choir. It's just continued. A guy named Don Diablo has a, had a big EDM record with it. So, yeah, it it's, it's never ends. It's, it's not like a song for you by Leon Russell, which has been recorded a thousand times, but... Well, it is, it's, been, uh, it's been mined quite often. Bruce, please tell me that you've stood in a DJ booth and heard a DJ play the EDM version of that. <clears throat> well, I listened to it the other day. Right. I sent it to my son. I, I, have a son one, one, I have twin boys, and the oldest by one minute is a pro basketball player in Spain. And uh, they play the way it is uh, when they, some, sometimes when he comes out. It's an intro music to my, my son, Keith Hornsby. But it doesn't really sort of, it doesn't sound amazing in the arena, that record. So I sent him Don Diablo and said, hey, try this. <laughs> or, or just use Changes by Tupac, and that'll work too. Lovely. How does it feel playing with the BBC Concert Orchestra? It's quite special here. Right? Well, it's fantastic. They sound amazing. It's, uh, I, have to, I have to concentrate to not want to just stop and listen. But uh, the great Rob Moose, who I work with a lot, he used to be in the group Bon Iver, as a great group. I just made a record with them. It's a chamber group in New York named Why Music, and Rob has done tons of arranging for me the last four or five years. He arranged this, all of these three. Yeah, it's lovely. Let's talk about uh, your influences. Uh, what kind of music did you listen to as a kid growing up? Well, I was just like any kid listening to the radio. Uh, my parents have, uh, have uh, a tape of... of me at age four singing Hound Dog by Elvis. And uh, so I was always into it, but I got really into piano much later. I, like every white kid in America, I wanted to play guitar when the Beatles came out. So I played guitar earlier, age 12, 13. 
uh, was more more interested in sports at the time. But in 17, I was turned on uh, to Leon Russell, the aforementioned, and Elton John by my brother, older brother. And uh, it just led me into wanting to do that. And I got, and I've never looked back from age 17 on. I got consumed with it. And I'm still consumed with it. So that's a, it's a beautiful way. The pursuit of the, unatta- the, of the unattainable is a beautiful way to live a life. You'll never get there. But along that road, you might have certain moments that are transcendent for you if you're willing to put in the work. Yeah, hard work pays off, as they say. Nice. Thank you for that, Bruce. Uh, what are you going to play next? Something more up to date? Yes, uh, we're going to play a, a, a song from a record that made a lot, of, made quite a splash here in the UK in 2019 with the uh, the rock critics, uh, Guardian UK and Times of London and Sunday Times and Mojo and and Uncut. Just wrote very kindly, very nicely about this record called Absolute Zero. And so we're going to play a song from that written with the great Justin Vernon, again aforementioned from Bon Iver. And here it is. Be okay. I'm 
I'll take what I can get and like it. Discarded one, discarded boy, discarded you toy. Stabbing Thank you, Bruce. Nice and job, everyone. Yeah, Orchestra, awesome. please. So good. Yeah, pretty, uh, well pretty. done, everyone. As, as you know, you're fantastic. The BBC Concert no Orchestra. Question. Lovely, lovely. Uh, you've yeah. done a lot of collaborations. Right. Um, you've worked with Huey Lewis, Bonnie Raitt, Bob Dylan, Squeeze, Stevie Nicks, Roger Waters, Grateful Dead, Doobie Brothers, and you're yeah. collaborating again with Why Music. Tell us about yeah. that. Well, I met them... Uh, at a great festival I played in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, bon Iver, for a few years, had this, this festival. Paul Simon played it. So many great people played it. Mostly an indie rock or indie pop affair. They had a modern classical music uh, stage where you could hear Frederick Ryshevsky or Ligeti or Olivier Michon. <laughs> This is my kind of festival. Right. <laughs> and so I was just mad for it. We were playing in front of uh, Bon Iver. And playing in front of us uh, was this chamber music group from New York, from Brooklyn area, playing with a beautiful uh, f uh, British female folk trio named the Staves. And uh, so I decided to get off, get off my bus and go listen to the act playing before us. And I was just floored by them. And I wanted to have them play at a little bootleg festival I was having in my little hometown in Virginia. So they came next the next year. And so to wrap it up quick, more quickly, uh, we started working together. And the aforementioned Rob Moose started re arranging for me. And when shutdown happened, we had just did a five-concert uh, five tour. Uh, it, we got it in. The last gig was March 5th. The world shut down about a week later, 2020. Uh, so we decided to start writing songs during COVID, and we wrote all the, we wrote all this music together r remotely, and then and so the record is finally coming out now. It's it's an aquatic themed album called Deep Sea Vents. Nice, good so, title yeah, coming up coming up in uh, in a month or so. Nice. Okay. Well, just quickly, we've got a yeah. question from a listener. This is a question oh, yeah, from yeah, Matt. Questions, right. Hi, Bruce. My name is Matt. I'm based in Glasgow. Looking forward to seeing you playing on, on Wednesday night as well. Yeah, thank My you. question for you, what goes through your head when you're playing these incredible solos on the piano? <laughs> well, you know, when you talk, you don't really have to think about it. You just do it. You just talk. And, and that's how music has become for me for many years. I made a deep study of this. I'm a music school guy, music school nerd. And uh, so... When I play a chord, say, or a chord progression, the notes light up for me. And so I'm just playing. I, I've gotten to the point where I can just be free and, and not just play licks when I'm soloing. I try to play theme and variations. I'll, play, I'll just play something and then move off from that. So uh, that's, that's how it works for me when I'm playing solos. When I'm just improvising, I'm a restless soul. So I'm always changing things, much to the chagrin of my nostalgic-loving audience, the, the, the certain s a segment of my audience that wants to stroll down memory lane. Uh, and, and so uh, 
I think I'm, I think of, of myself as fairly kind to them, but mostly I'm there for the adventure. And so, uh, so right from being a restless soul and then dealing with it and no, serious music theor theoretical uh, work uh, study. And so all of that, I know that's a, that's an involved, <laughs> we'll take it, Bruce. involved answer, but that's closer to the right, right answer. Awesome. All right. Thank great you question. very much. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. We've got uh, time for one more track from you. And usually this is a cover version. It is a cover version, but it's not a cover version because you co-wrote this. Yeah, it's a bit Don of him. a trick, this. Yeah. I, I get in my way. I, I, I placate the request from the BBC, but I get to play a song of mine, too, because I co-wrote this cover, a quote-unquote version, with the great Don Henley, uh, who, who, who had the hit with it. Uh, uh, I played and, and co-produced co with it um, uh, with him and so right uh, this is the song that we wrote it's called the end of the any at the end of the innocence one two one two three four
knows how long this will last How we come so far so fast Somewhere back there in the dust That same small town in each of us I need to remember this So maybe give me just one kiss Come and take a long last look Before we say goodbye Say goodbye You can lay your head back on the ground Let your hair fall all around Offer up your best defense Hi, I'm Vernon Kay, and Radio 2's Piano Room Month is back. From the iconic Maida Vale Studios with some amazing acts and, of course, BBC's very own concert orchestra. Playing live today is the Queen of British Soul, who's wowed us with her powerful voice across three decades, bringing us pop, gospel, R&B and soul. And today, taking on a Radiohead track, please welcome the truly awesome Beverly Knight. Oh, Brand- 